in our Creator, Allahu Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And the next part of the hadith, and Nabi Sallallahu says, فَأَبَوَاهُ يُحَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ And the Prophet Sallallahu said, but the, the, the tarbiyah or the upbringing of that individual may vary depending on his situation in his household. So depending on the situation in that person's household, even though they're born with a natural inclination or natural disposition to believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, the upbringing could change the way or the trajectory of their beliefs. So the Prophet ﷺ said, for example, here, it may be that the parents make that person or that child to become Jewish or Christian or a polytheist or um, a Buddhist or a Hindu. It just all depends uh, uh, about the upbringing of that child. Some people, alhamdulillah, they, they are born into Muslim families. Uh, they've been blessed with, with that upbringing. And others um, are traversing down other paths um, other than Islam. And they have to find their way back. And if Allah Azza wa Jal sees in that person that, that khayr, that goodness, that willingness and desire to find al-haq, to find the truth, Allah Azza wa Jal will extend that branch of guidance to that person. And it will be on that person to accept or reject. Now, and Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدَنَا Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran that he took a mithaq, he took a contract or a treaty from the children of Adam. All the progeny, all the children of Adam, Allah Azza wa Jal, before we, our physical bodies were created, Allah Azza wa Jal took a contract from us. It's called an Arabic mithaq. It's a, a firm binding contract between two parties. Okay. And this contract, what is it? It's between us and our creator, Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay. And the contract is as follows. It has very clear clauses in this contract. Allah is our creator. We are his slaves. He created us and we worship him. And Allah Azza wa Jal promises us that if we worship him and single him out in worship, because this is the reason we were created, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah says, I did not create the jinn kind and the mankind except that they worship me. So this contract between us and Allah Azza wa Jal, if we worship him and single him out in worship, and give our thanks and, uh, uh, and, and ask Allah for forgiveness, Allah will enter us into paradise. This is the, this is the deal that we have with Allah Azza wa Jal. And we testified to this. Um, Allah Azza wa Jal, and, and there's many hadith sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that confirm this as well, that um, Allah Azza wa Jal, he created Adam, uh, alayhi salam, may uh, peace be upon him, and he extracted from Adam's backbone or soul the, the progeny of Adam, all the arwah, all the souls of anyone that would ever be created from humanity from the time of Adam until the, until the day of judgment. And we bore witness to Allah Azza wa Jal being our creator. That's why Allah says in the Quran, Alastu bi Rabbikum. Allah Azza wa Jal says, uh, am I not your master? Am I not your Lord? So this is a rhetorical question. Allah Azza wa Jal didn't say, uh, I am your Lord, informing us. Okay. He didn't say, I am your force. Uh, I am your Lord. This is a teaching mechanism to teach somebody something they don't know. Okay. So, but, I'll, but we know at this time, that Allah Azza wa Jal extracted the souls of, uh, of all of humanity from Adam alayhi salam. He, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal says, am I not your Lord? So how is it that we already knew Allah is our Lord? If we were just extracted from Adam alayhi salam, how is it? It's, it's simply like this, that 
it is ingrained in the fabric of our souls, the fitra. It's called fitra in Arabic, the natural disposition. It's ingrained in our souls that we believe in Allah Azza wa We believe in our creator, our khaliq, right? So that, that is why that in every human being, they have that natural inclination to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, so uh, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for guiding us to Al-Islam. Even if it's a, uh, a Muslim person or they come from a Muslim family, maybe they still, that's not a free ticket to get into paradise. Just because your name is Muhammad or Ahmed or Aisha and you're from a Muslim family, you don't get an automatic ticket to uh, Al-Jannah. You have to choose Al-Islam. Even if you're from a Muslim family, sure, you're, 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 you're brought up into the environment, but ultimately you choose. You choose that direction and your heart and you have that niyyah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship Him. And for those of us that um, were not brought up in Muslim families, and alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal guided us, um, we have... We have a different. We had a different road to travel, and um, you know it's very touching for me to see and hear from all of you um, because I see myself in all of you um, here this evening. Because it was that you were me just yesterday. You were me just yesterday. So it's very touching, and um, I'm, I'm very pleased to be here tonight. Um, alhamdulillah, this is my one of my only lectures I've given that I've never had to prepare for because it's just a story about <laughs> my journey to Islam. Um, but I, I will try, I'll try to, uh, you know, summarize um, uh, as quick as possible, inshallah. So just to give you uh, a background about myself, I was born in, in Vancouver in uh, 1978, so you don't have to do the quick math, or it's, I'm, I'm 42 years old now, alhamdulillah, uh, and I lost, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all with a long healthy life in obedience to him, Allahumma ameen. Um, so I was born here in, in, in Vancouver, Canada, and uh, I moved around a lot when I, when I was younger throughout this part of Canada. And eventually, uh, my parents and I, we moved to uh, England, to the UK. And I lived there for a couple of years, or just over a couple of years. This is when I was small, and uh, ended up uh, heading back to Canada, to Eastern Canada, to London, Ontario, with my English accent. I had a, a little English accent back then uh, that I quickly lost because I was so young. Um, and then I was in Eastern Canada for a little bit, and then I ultimately re return back to home base here in Vancouver and, um, you know, uh, went through elementary school and uh, middle school or high uh, middle school or junior high and, uh, and high school, went through the, the, the public school system. And, uh, you know, I, my, my parents, my dad was raised by uh, Catholics, nuns, and my mom is Anglican. Uh, it's a dumb, dumb denomination of Christianity, um, but they don't practice. Um, uh, I, I was not never brought up with religion or uh, it was just, just the title. Um, though I, I attended church here and there through, if we, if we met family friends or we stayed with family friends and they were church goers or something, I, I remember going to church the odd time or, or for the wedding. And subhanAllah, for some reason, I just, my heart never felt content being in that atmosphere. Um, I really wasn't sure why, but I just didn't feel that was a place I really wanted to be. And this was, this was actually from a young age. Um, so, but anyways, like I said, we never really went anyways. Um, so through, through my high school years or junior high school years, I, I started um, pondering about the creation uh, more, more and more. As I kept growing older and older, I would ponder more and reflect on life and question why we were here and, and things like this. And I remember one instance when I was about 18 or 19 years old, um, I was with a friend of mine um, and we were on this dock um, by this lake. It was like two or three in the morning, we were camping. Um, and I was, we were just laying with our backs on the dock and 
I was like, you know, like, why are we here? Because we were looking at the stars and we're like, what? Like, it just seemed ridiculous that we were, we were just here to live our lives, like eat, sleep, go to work, you know, have hobbies and then just die. Like, you know, I, I asked my friend that, this, this guy, Chris, I remember him. And uh, he's like, you know, that's deep, you know, like, you know, why are we here? That's crazy. You know, if you think about it, you know, this is, so I always had this question, you know, and, um, and, and this desire to learn the truth. And uh, I remember when I was in high school, um, there was this girl that was in my class and she's like, you know, I'm, you gotta remember, I'm coming from someone with no religious background at all. And um, this girl's like, you know, we're just bacteria that evolved, you know? And I was like, how, I'm like, how is that possible? How could we just, how could we evolve into this perfect human being? And she's like, well, you know, think about it. It's like a millions and millions of years. And I was like, ah, I'm like, I, I don't think, you know, even in millions and millions of years, if we're like this little worm or something or a little piece of bacteria, and then all of a sudden we evolved into this, I'm like, I, I don't think that could happen, you know? And and she's like, well, you know, think about it. You know, this this is one of the ways that, um, uh, you know, throughout evolution, you, we could have evolved and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. And then one thing my English teacher, uh, my grade 12 English teacher said that scared me. He's like, God and religion is just all made up to cope with death. And I was like, that really affected me. I was like, that actually started giving me like hypochondria where I was like, I thought stuff was wrong with me. Cause I was like, cause that put this dark cloud over me. I was like, so we just live and die. And then, you know, our family cries over us for a couple of weeks and then we're forgotten. And, and that's it. Just, that's just the cycle of life. Like how, like you know morbid is that you know <laughs> and, and and that really actually you know made me feel depressed inside because I was like like it just almost life just felt pointless after I heard that statement and um and then I I had I had some Muslim friends I didn't actually know they were Muslim and this is actually something to this day when I mentioned it to my friends or my colleagues like I actually, for some reason, never heard the word Muslim or Islam my entire life until I just started getting introduced to it just before I became Muslim. So I was, I, I always thought about that. I'm like, maybe Allah protected my heart from something because you know how like, you know, the media is or some, uh, maybe somebody that mistreated me in my, in my younger years, if, if I knew they were Muslim or something, maybe that would have caused me to like reject the religion or something. I'm not sure. That was my kind of um, uh, reasoning, th thinking about it, uh, why Allah would protect, protect me from uh, uh, hearing about Islam and Muslims until um, one of my neighbors just lives actually just down the street from me, um, a friend of mine that was, I was going to school with, his uh, father was um, a Maulana um, from, from India. And uh, we used to talk all the time and stuff. And he, he started telling me stories about jinn, you know, and I, and I thought that was fascinating because I was always fascinated with like, you know, uh, uh, supernatural stuff. And, you know, cause you know, you know how you have those shows like unsolved mysteries or, or whatever, you know, you know, ha haunted houses and things are moving and there's no explanation for it or whatever. So he was telling me, he's like, yeah, you know, like, uh, there's, there's the, there's the world of the jinn, this uh, other creation that, uh, God created. And, um, we can't see them. And this could explain some supernatural occurrences. And I was like, wow, that's actually, that could make sense. You know, like, cause he explained to me the idea of somebody dying and then just roaming around this earth, their soul. He's like, that doesn't make any sense. And I agreed with him. And I, I thought that was interesting. And he gave me some books about uh, like stories like this. And so I, I read some of that and uh, and then I ended up reconnecting with an old friend from high school. So um, I, I've graduated by this point. Um, and I was about, 
about 20 and I reconnected with an old friend from high school and he had a close friend that was a Muslim and uh, we, we got close together and we, uh, me and the Muslim guy ended up getting close together where we would end up meeting up without my friend from high school. Um, and then we would go on for like long walks, you know, like five, six hours. We would just have long conversations over coffee or tea or something. And I had tons of questions about life. And for some reason, this guy had the answer. Everything I asked him, he was able to answer. Uh, well, he wasn't a scholar or anything like that, but he just had the answers to um, all of my questions. And it just totally made sense to me. Like, you know, um, you know, Allah is our creator. We only have one God. He sent, he sent prophets to mankind with the same universal message from the time of Adam to Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with the same universal message, La ilaha illallah, there is no God worthy of worship in truth except Allah. Um, and it just totally made sense to me. And he gave me a book um, called The Brief Illustrated Guide to Understanding Islam. Um, and <laughs> I had a really, um, you know, questionable job at the time. Um, a friend of mine, his his uncle worked at um, a government, it was called the BC Liquor Store Warehouse. Um, the, the warehouse, the Mustoda, like the storage center for alcohol and uh, for the government. And uh, my friend's uncle worked there and my friend told me, he's like, you know, like, you know, even if you don't drink, you know, just like you can work there, you know? And I was like, yeah, I was like government job. Like that sounds pretty good. And so he's like, let's both apply. My uncle said he can get us in. So um, <laughs> it was funny. And we laugh about this to this day. I still have contact with that, that uh, friend of mine. And uh, I actually got the job. He didn't get the job. His uncle vouched for both of us and his own nephew didn't get the job, but I ended up getting the job. So I was, I was working there for about two weeks and I was taking my brief illustrated guide to understanding Islam with me. Um, so on my break, or if I got to work early, I would be, I would be reading it. And um, eventually I went back to the Maulana, um, the, my friend's uh, father, that's like the scholar. And um, I asked him, I said, you know, like I, I read like in Islam, like you're not supposed to like drink and, and stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't, I don't drink. So, um, but I am working at this place. So I'm like, but I'm just moving it around. I'm like, you know, like it's, it's, it's okay. Right. He said, well, actually in Islam, you shouldn't have anything to do with it. You shouldn't be buying it for people, handling it and stuff, stuff like this. So I was like, oh, wow. Um, because I, but because I was convinced of, um, Islam being the truth, I found it like easy to, to leave that job. And I did. Um, and it was a really good paying job at the time it was, this was going back 20 years or more than 20 years. And it was starting at 16 to 50 an hour, like government jobs. So it was really good money. My family thought it was absolutely bonkers for, for leaving that job. Um, and I could understand their, their line of thinking as well, but I just couldn't move forward knowing the blessing that I could feel was coming and and finding Islam, then I knew that I, I I had to I had to leave this and start fresh and, and start in a way that was pleasing to Allah and this and I gave up this job before I became Muslim, and um, so the the brother that gave me the book um, he gave me another like Islamic library and I was reading it and he's like so like are you ready to become Muslim and and I was like ah uh, you know like I wanna I wanna get to know. The, the religion more. I mean, like, I want to learn how to practice it better. So like when I do go to the masjids or the mosques that I know, like, I look like I know what I'm doing, you know, I don't, don't want to look like a rookie when I go there, it'll be embarrassing. And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, don't worry about it. He's like, I'll go with you. And um, um, you shouldn't stall it. You shouldn't wait. Like, if you feel like you want to do it now, don't like delay it six months from now, because, because you don't know what can happen from now until then. And I was like, yeah, that's true. Cause that's what I was seeing. I was like, you know, give me like six months. I'll read this whole library and I'll, you know, get, 
get my slam down real good, you know, and, and then I'll, then I'll enter, you know? So, um, <laughs> I ended up, um, he ended up taking me to this little musalla, this little prayer place in our, uh, in one of the surrounding areas. And I went there and I was just there to attend the lecture and just listen in the back. And then I ended up, uh, taking my shahada that night. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, really amazing. It was, uh, unbelievable to, 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 to enter and everybody was giving me hugs and I felt so, uh, welcomed and, um, and then that's when my, then that's when my journey, uh, really began. <laughs> I became Muslim and then, um, my, my family, alhamdulillah, uh, well, my parents, um, they were very accepting of it because they saw the improvement in my character. Not that, not that I was, um, you know, behaving poorly before, but it just enhanced um, my my way of dealing with them, and all the values and manners that um, Islam promotes that we learn from the Quran and from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So they were very um, uh, welcoming of it. And, um, you know, some of my family members uh, are okay with it. And I am actually haven't spoken to the other half of my family in quite some time, even though I'm constantly trying to reach out to them. Um, but because of my Islam, they don't, they, they don't speak to me, um, which is unfortunate. Um, but I, I told I told them the last time I talked to them I said my my doors are always open I love you guys and um, I'm I'm here for you guys always I'll never I'll never cut you guys off and I and I hope that we can we can see each other and talk more you know so you just have to try uh, in, in those situations because Islam encourages us to 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 keep those uh, ties of kinship solid like. The ties with our families solid and connected, because cutting them off, you know, as we know in Islam, is is not allowed. Cutting family members off. So, but these are the, some of the type of struggles that um, people um, that become Muslim face, and even even people that come from Muslim families, once they start to practice, um, they they may find um, some opposition from family members, like oh, like you're looking you know, too religious now, like, you know, slow down, you know, we are Muslim, but we're not, you know, that type, you know, <laughs> so you, so you, you know, practicing the deen in general, uh, practicing religion in general, sometimes can, um, you know, create some tension between you and, you know, others in your, in your circle or in your family, but um, as long as you carry yourself with, with good manners and, um, just know that this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then um, you'll definitely be able to get through that um, with ease, inshallah. So um, after after I became Muslim and I was kind of, I was actually became Muslim a year, sorry, a, a, the night before Ramadan. And I ended up, alhamdulillah, I ended up fasting all of Ramadan. I was really, I came in really, you know, guns blazing you know into the into the religion alhamdulillah and i ended up fasting ramadan i was i was very happy uh, that i was able to and um i met up with a sheikh um a scholar he had come from saudi arabia and he was visiting and i had my friends translate for me i'm like i'm like hey i want to i want to go to the university i want to go i want to go study like can you get me in and and then he was he was telling them to translate to me. He said, you know, you just came out of a storm, you know, the storm of you know disbelief and the storm of not being a Muslim. And then you've just, you know, you just got into like smooth sailing now. Like, you know, <clears throat> like take some time for yourself to for everything to settle and then and then try to to go overseas and, and do those things. And, and there was wisdom behind that because, you know, I was fresh. I was fresh and I, I was just learning a lot of things and I was very green. So, you know, maybe had I traveled and maybe I would have met somebody and had a bad experience and would have put a bad taste in my mouth. So every, every uh, step has to be, you know, uh, uh, taken with wisdom, you know. So um, I just I just basically, you know, 
took that advice and I, and I just tried studying at home and studying from people locally around here. And I remember this one night um, we were at the masjid, it was, it was Tarawih, it was uh, the Tarawih prayers in Ramadan uh, at the masjid and there, I was praying and then the, bro the brother beside me was crying, he was crying his eyes out and I'm, I was like, wow, like what's he experiencing? Like he, he understands what's being recited here. I'm like, I, I really got to learn this Arabic. And um, uh, that's when I, I started taking Arabic classes locally. And eventually I ended up uh, saving my money and going over to Egypt, to uh, Cairo. And I made my niya, my intention to go for uh, one year. So uh, with, I went to Cairo for one year and faced some situations there the school I started at that closed after two weeks because of licensing issues and and then I then I, I sat in my house then they sent me private teachers and I went to another school and then they ended up closing down for the same reason and I kept moving around and so by the time I really got into the groove of, of studying the year was up that I intended on uh, uh, and uh, going out for and, and I was like, you know what, I got to stay for one more year because I, I just felt like I was starting to get somewhere in the language. And uh, so I ended up staying for two years in Cairo. And that was an amazing uh, experience. Um, the first time I ever like left home uh, without my family, I went to Cairo, uh, was there for two years straight. And then I came back and I thought, you know, that would probably, be, I guess, be it. That was my you know, uh, my effort, I put it in two years. But then after nine months of being back in Vancouver, I was like, you know, I really miss Egypt. I really miss Egypt. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with uh, getting a scholarship uh, to go to Alexandria. So which is uh, a different part of Egypt by the water this time, which was more appealing. I was like, oh, wow. I'm like, before it was like the this polluted city, you know, the outskirts of this polluted city. Um, uh, but it was still, uh, it was still an amazing experience, Cairo, but then that was, you know, the, the appeal of the, the ocean, uh, of Alexandria. And I was like, wow, you know, I do want to go back and here's a scholarship that just fell into my lap. So I ended up going back, um, to, to Alexandria, uh, to Alexandria and a few, uh, uh, brothers here from, from my area actually were, was able to go to, which was comforting to have, uh, like, you know, friends from home. Uh, nearby. And uh, that's where, um, uh, as Sheikh uh, Adij mentioned earlier, that's where uh, we cross paths. And um, it was an honor to meet him and all the brothers that came with him as well. And so I, I stayed in Alexandria for um, about a year and a half. And, and then before I made my way back uh, to Vancouver again. Um, so now at this point, I've had about three and a half years of Arabic under my belt. And um, so, alhamdulillah, I was uh, I was pleased with the results. And and if you if you make an intention and you're sincere in that intention and make it for Allah, so Allah makes it uh, easy for you. Even though you may find difficulty in it first, as long as you persevere and ask Allah for help, Allah will make it easy for you. And He made it easy for me, alhamdulillah. Um, so when I when I returned back to Vancouver, I started teaching Arabic. Um, at, a, at a at a number or two colleges and then some private classes and for an Islamic school and um, then the itch came again <laughs> to leave again uh, this time it was four years later um, and I and I made my way to Malaysia um, which is actually the same university that Sheikh Adij graduated from online um, when we connected in Alexandria I told him about the uh, Medina International University in Malaysia and um, gave him a bunch of information. And I never thought he followed up with it or I didn't know what became of that information until years later, he told me I actually completed the, the, the university and, uh, there and uh, received a bachelor's. And I was, uh, I was amazed, subhanAllah, I just gave the information, totally forgot about it, lived my life. and. He continued and uh, graduated, subhanAllah. So um, 
I ended up four years later after returning from uh, Alexandria, I ended up going to Malaysia. I enrolled in the university, um, the same university, but I actually attended on campus. And I was there for um, just over a year, almost a year and a half I was there. And before I went to Malaysia, I applied for the, the University of, uh, of Medina in, in El Medina al Munawara in, in Saudi Arabia, in Medina. I applied for the university there. And I had, I had applied, I don't know how many times over the years to that university. And I just, I just would never see my late name on the acceptance list. It was, um, it, it was always usually people from Eastern Canada. We used to always get frustrated. The brothers here in Vancouver, like, oh, there's like, you know, 20 guys from Toronto on the list. There's nobody from Vancouver. Like, when are they going to select somebody from here? And uh, so I, before I left um, to go to Malaysia, I submitted my documents again to uh, Medina and Saudi Arabia. And um, in the midst of my studies in Malaysia, um, the names got released to go to Saudi. And I saw the, the acceptance list of the Canadians and it was, uh, I think it was like six or seven names and my name wasn't on there. And I, I really was just fed up at that point. I said, subhanAllah, like, I don't think I'm going to bother applying again. It's like, I'm like, <laughs> I was getting so frustrated because I really wanted to go, but I just like, you know, it's just, I guess it's just not meant to be, you know, like, so, uh, and then I didn't realize they had released a second list. Uh, and about two or three months after they received, they released that second list, um, one of my Quran teachers here from, uh, from Vancouver, he, we were exchanging emails and he said, oh, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're accepted into the, the University of Medina. And I said, I said, no, um, I'm attending El Medina International University in Malaysia, not the Medina in Saudi Arabia. And he said, no, you got accepted to the Medina in Saudi Arabia. Your name is on a list of accepted students. And I was like, no way. And he's like, let me, let me send you the list. So he sent me the list and I was like, oh my goodness. I'm like, I can't believe I was accepted. And I was so happy. And it really like, you know, turned my world upside down, but in a good way, because I had just established myself in, uh, in Malaysia. And I was there with my family. And um, so I had established myself there in Malaysia and I didn't know what to do now. Like, like it's going to be like really challenging to pack up everything and leave. But alhamdulillah, Allah made it easy. I, I left my family in Malaysia and I took, uh, I took a plane from directly from Malaysia to, to Medina. And um, Allah made it easy for me there as well, because one of my friends from my, my city here in Vancouver was teaching English there and he had his own apartment, everything like that. So alhamdulillah, I didn't have to pay anything. He just took me in and I lived with him for three months. He showed me Medina, Mecca, Jeddah, every, he showed me all over Saudi and um, uh, I really got to like study uh, Saudi when I was there. And I, I, I wasn't studying because I, I, I had just arrived and it was already mid semester. And um, I just spent that time trying to figure out how I could get my family to come over because that's not always easy for university students to, to bring their families over right away. But Alhamdulillah, um, that was made easy for me too. Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah for that because my friend that was teaching English there he ended up knowing somebody who worked for a princess's office, one of the royal family members. So I, I got this document for my university to, requesting that I would be allowed to bring my family over like immediately. And alhamdulillah, I couldn't believe how fast that my family was able to come over. And um, so I... Uh, attended the university uh, in Medina. I was there because uh, I did a year in Malaysia uh, of, of university. And then I was there for um, uh, for just over two and a half years. And then I came back to Vancouver. Um, and that was in 2017. So alhamdulillah, I've spent about, yeah, three, probably about six and a half, seven years um, 
out of Vancouver studying away from my family. Um, but those were definitely the best seven years of my life that, that to be able to experience those, those cultures, those Muslim cultures and the values and the hospitality and the atmosphere, the Islamic atmosphere, um, it was, it's, it's priceless. It was absolutely priceless. And it really helps you get in tuned with, you know, with, with your brothers and sisters from all over the world. And, you know, especially when you go to um, uh, Medina, um, because that's, that's a hub for Muslims to go to and, and Mecca, you know, from all over the world, Muslims, you meet your Muslim brothers and sisters from every, from every background, you know, from Africa, from Sweden, from Russia, from, from China, from Japan, you know, you meet, you meet all your brothers and sisters there. And when I was going to the university in Medina, I, you know, just like seeing like a Chinese guy speak fluent Arabic and, you know, a Swedish guy speak fluent Arabic. And, you know, it was really an amazing sight. And, um, you know, I'm thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings he's given me. And, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, basically my, my journey in a nutshell. And um, like I said at the beginning, you know, subhanAllah, just to see all of you in here, it just reminds me of, you know, like when I first started, you know, and, um, but it's, it's a really great initiative that um, Sheikh Adij has started here with the convert halaka because, halaka because it's, um, it's really important um, that we, we connect and we, and especially when you're, I know how it is when you, when you become Muslim having that that bond with other Muslims and especially people that have become Muslim as well um, you have that in common you can relate because maybe we have gone through different things that maybe other Muslims haven't gone through because we weren't Muslim our whole lives so to share those stories and to relate and to be kind of you know raw in front of those people and just break down the walls and just just talk about stuff um, it, it's really important and you know one thing that this is probably one of the most important sentences that I've ever heard in my life. And when I became Muslim, the person that one of the people that helped me become Muslim, he said to me when I became Muslim, he's like, he's like, always remember, judge a Muslim by Islam and not Islam by a Muslim. And that statement has saved me so much heartache because you are going to run into people <laughs> that um, may be Muslim, or may call themselves Muslim, and they may treat you bad. But you knowing that that's not Islam, that action is not Islam. Maybe, maybe you meet a Muslim person and they swear at you or they steal at you and they say they're Muslim, but that those actions are not from Islam and they're not allowed and they're not pleasing to Allah. So when you can separate those two, because I have met um, people that have become Muslim and they didn't have this way of thinking in their mind and they were mistreated, uh, unfortunately, and that really shook, shook them, shook their faith really hard because they can't understand like, oh, like we're supposed to all be Muslims. Like, why are you treating me like that? But I can tell you the, the, the most beautiful people I've met in my life have have been Muslims, uh, the, the 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 beautiful manners and hospitality and kindness and generosity have been Muslims, but you know sometimes we'll run into people that may not be representing Islam the way it should be. But as long as you bear in mind that sentence, judge a Muslim by Islam, not Islam by a Muslim, because right away you'll be able to identify things. You'd be like, oh, that guy's you know or that that brother or that sister is not acting like Muhammad Sallallahu taught us to act or to, that's against the Quran. Not that you go around accusing people of things, but that helps you separate what the religion of Allah is and what the, the actions of human beings are. So um, that, that's, uh, that's my advice for you guys. Um, it's, golden advice that I received that I definitely wanted to pass on to you. And um, this is my, my, my journey to Islam. 
um, summarized uh, <laughs> cut version. Um, but uh, I thank you uh, for allowing me to be here and, and tell my story. And I definitely would like to stay in touch with uh, all of you. It's it's uh, really touching to me to to see you all here tonight. And I'm I'm your brother in Islam. And and I, I you can reach out to me anytime. I have no problem with that. Um, I'd love to you know hear your stories, connect with you. And if you have any questions, um, you want to touch base with me regularly. Um, I would love I would love to help because you are me and I am you. So we're we're all one. We're all one body. Um, we're all one ummah, one nation. Uh, we're all believers uh, of Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanakallah bihamdika shalawa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That was really awesome. Alhamdulillah, it was really nice to hear your story. Uh, very, very touching. Alhamdulillah, I'm sure all of us uh, felt uh, that that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the power of your words and you know the your journey is very inspiring. You kept uh, going uh, to you know, firstly how you accepted Islam. And then how you, then you built on that. Uh, I, I, if it's okay, I'll ask the first question and everybody else, if you're, you're free to unmute and ask questions or type questions in the chat, if that's okay, uh, Sheikh Hassan, yes? Questions about what yeah. you said just, yeah? yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. One, of, one of the things I wanted to ask you was that what kept, like, you know, you mentioned about how you wanted to learn Arabic, right? Like, and you know, you saw this person crying and you, you said to yourself, you need to understand the Quran and this is one thing you have to do. Uh, how like you know there's one thing to kind of feel that way I mean, we talk a little bit about just this aspect of our of our faith particularly from like like your vantage point as a as a convert right someone who didn't grow up ethnically you know in an environment where they were exposed to a lot of you know uh the practices of islam the vernacular of islam right like you coming from that vantage point and saying, you know what, I'm going to dedicate three and a half years of my life to, to this end, right? What was the driving force there? Well, like I said, from when I, when I was next to that brother in prayer and I, I knew he was experiencing the Quran in a different way than I was, that made me, that sparked the fire that I, I really wanted to learn um the arabic language and what kept me going it's like it's like like a puzzle you know like you you learn a little bit and you're starting to understand some of it and then you're like but i'm not there yet i haven't completed the whole picture yet so i gotta keep going so it was always you know um you know just you know kind of like picking your way through the through the ice or, or through the mine trying to get to the gold you know and that and I knew if I just kept staying the course, that eventually I would be able to um, understand the Quran and really uh, experience it, like when it's being recited. And because this is this is this is a change I made in my life. This is the the biggest change I've ever made in my life, and and it's a very serious change because it has to do with your akhirah, has to do with your. Uh, you're hereafter so it's it's like this blessing that I've been granted is just it's just a motivation to uh, try and excel in that as as much as I can and you know we we, we all have our weak moments and our ups and downs but um, you know also studying over there and then finding good companionship when I was when I was abroad and um just enjoying the culture and enjoying travel just everything was just you know uh meshing together uh uh well for me to the point like i said when i when i came back from cairo after the two years like nine months later i had the itch to like save up money and 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 leave again i wanted to go back i just i just missed egypt and i missed being in the classroom and studying and um you know so so basically yeah what motivated me was just to keep, you know, clawing at that, uh, that wall until I got to the prize was just to, 
to try to understand the Quran as, as best as possible. And every day, um, you know, every day we are trying to still improve. Doesn't mean just because I went away for that period of time, then now I'm, you know, mastered everything. No, it's, it's all a process, you know, we're all on different levels of knowledge. You know, some of you have just become Muslim so recently and you look at me like, wow, like he just went over there, but I'm looking at somebody else going, wow, that guy was, I, I know people that have been like abroad for like 20, 25 years studying and that like that I'm like, I'm nobody to them, you know, like in comparison, but it, we all try to um, uh, do as best as we can and put, uh, put whatever effort we can in. Inshallah, that's awesome. Uh, other questions up uh, uh, from from the uh, audience. Please please feel free to type them in or unmute your mic and ask them. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I have some like not really question but some comments or some reflections. Yeah. Uh, maybe sure. some discussions like you discuss about like you your family say that you become a better person after you converted to, ex to Islam and then yeah. you also say there's you may you may say Muslims doing bad things so I mean mm. yeah because like this is one of my problem as well like I want to become a better person but I still I think I'm a bad Muslim so but like this somehow affected my relationship with God. And yeah, but, but like gradually, I kind of like adapted to this, but I don't know. I mean, I still cannot make myself better. Like sometimes it's difficult to keep away from the sins that mm -hmm. Islam like denounces. And it's like sometimes really difficult to, to do good things like I don't know how to cope with this. Right. You know, uh, sister, you know, mashallah, tabarakallah, you, um, this is a good sign. The way, how you're asking this right now is that you're concerned about being a better Muslim. So that's already a good sign there. You're worried that you're not doing enough. And you know, that is actually a good sign. It shows you, that shows you have Iman, you have faith and and that's really important, you know, it, it's, it's dangerous for somebody to feel secure, like, oh, oh, yeah, I'm Muslim now, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm, I got a ticket to Jannah, no problem. No, that's not the attitude that's very dangerous. But for us to have a concern that we're not doing enough, I have a concern, sister, that I'm not doing enough. I, I'm trying to better myself personally every day. I have shortcomings, um, you know, uh, but that concern of yours is a very good sign. And what happens a lot when like you're, especially when you're new Muslim, um, you have a lot of information. You're trying to digest everything. You know what it is? You know what you do? You just break it down. Islam is so incredibly easy. It, our creator revealed Islam for us and it's in our imprinted in our souls. It's an easy way of life islam our creator who designed us gave us this religion gave us this way of life so we should never find difficulty in practicing it and if there's any difficulty that's due to maybe our lack of understanding or trying to do too much or maybe some negative influences but um practice your islam just go to the basics keep keep the five pillars of islam uh in your mind keep to the basics keep your keep making your five daily prayers maybe uh pick up a small little book to read on islam and take it step by step slowly slowly and then you will build up i remember when i became muslim everybody was giving me books <laughs> i had so many books to read and i wasn't really a reader before islam i, I wasn't really that interested in reading and um, so when I became Muslim, I had wheelbarrows of books all over and I felt overwhelmed because I was like, I got to, you know, I got to read all these and when am I going to find time? And then I ended up not reading a lot of them because there was just too many to read. So you just have to, you know, you have your Quran, your translation of the meanings of the Quran and, you know, and another little basic book on Islam and just, you know, 
uh, uphold your five daily prayers and then just try to be uh, the best human being as you can. Try to involve yourself um, uh, doing some good deeds, um, some voluntary, voluntary, uh, voluntary work, um, uh, these type of things, and especially having good companionship, good sisters around you um, that have that, that support system. Because I know as uh, from being a new Muslim too, even just going for a coffee with a new Muslim goes a long way. You don't have to, you know, have the, like a lot of new Muslims that I was meeting up with here in Vancouver, we would just hang out, just hang out and have, you know, just be, just be friends. You don't, you don't have to, you know, every time you meet up and do with a new Muslim and sit there and like, you know, drill them about all these different rules in Islam that they have to uphold. No, it's more about having that companionship and that, that bond with one another and having somebody that supports you and understands you. Um, so ha keeping good companionship, you know, uh, some sisters and um, some good sisters to be around you will be very helpful, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you for your... You're, wel you're welcome. You're welcome. I, I, really, I really feel like this is one of the, the things that, you know, new Muslims really need. They have to have, have to have support, you know, like can never... I've, you know, like I've been in masjids before and people have become Muslim. And then I've, you know, uh, asked like, hey, like, where's brother Steve? Um, like, where is he? Like a couple of weeks later. Oh, I don't know. I don't have his number. And nobody knows. It was just like, he was just the number. Somebody came in and they became Muslim and don't hear from them again. But that's not right. That that person is needing support. So um, I want, that's why I said because I understand this point because I was there and any of you, any of you guys um, need to reach out to me personally, talk. You're not going to bother me in any way. Please. Um, you can talk to uh, uh, Sheikh Adij. He can give you my, my contact information and, and we can talk. We can have discussions, um, whatever. I'm here for you. I'm here for you guys. 100, 100%. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Hassan. Yeah, it's, uh, that's so nice of you. Uh, and um, I, I will share your uh, email address with those uh, who uh, want to uh, reach out to you through email. Uh, if you're, uh, I'm not sure um, if uh, your WhatsApp is is back or not, right? No, it, if you it, are back, it crashed for yeah. some reason. And um, but I'm I'm on Telegram. I'm on Telegram right now. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right. Uh, because we have just that we have a WhatsApp group for all the uh, the people uh, who have accepted Islam and a, a few others who are not okay. converts, just as like a support great, group. Great, and uh, you know, it would be really nice to have you on it too. Even though I, I now I learned you were in London for a little bit, so you know, <laughs> <laughs> even <laughs> I'm your people. I'm your people. <laughs> You're our people. Right? Yeah. Um, even though, even if you weren't, you were always, uh, of course, more than welcome. But now even even extra. Reason, <laughs> uh, since you were <laughs> yeah, inshallah if i get my whatsapp right. back working inshallah i will uh i'd be honored to join with you guys yeah that's awesome thank you i had a question that was asked by uh, a couple of people there's, there's, a, there's a couple of questions in the chat there's a question by devin Devin, welcome uh, nice to see you uh there's a question that was said to me to ask you uh which is before you became muslim did you find yourself ever asking god for help or have a relationship with him. Uh, sorry, I was I was actually reading Devin's uh, uh, question when you said that. Could you repeat that, please? Sure, I'll, re sure, I'll repeat that. Uh, before you became Muslim, did you find yourself ever asking God to for help or to have a relationship? With yes, him? yes, definitely. Um, I was in I was in a period of of my life. Um, before just before Islam probably about six months or eight months before um I was you know like I said I was feeling a bit of like hypochondria from like what my my English teacher said like seeing God and religion as a way to cope with death it was you know a, a baseless statement but for some reason it you know weighed heavy on me and it was it was I was very depressed at, at, at times because it, it's it's if you actually believe that like I don't even know how people continue living um like even people that are atheists that don't believe in god I, I don't understand being someone alhamdulillah that has 
the has the faith of of uh, and belief in my creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then thinking about somebody that doesn't have that and are living their life thinking there's no god um it's such an empty feeling so uh when i was when i i i did believe in god when i you know, when i was growing up i had that belief like when something would happen in my life or something i'd be like oh god you know please help me like help me like i would actually say that and um, um, and I was I was going through a tough time dealing with things in that period, and I did ask God for help. Um, I do remember that, and He did help. He did help, and He guided me to Al Islam. Alhamdulillah. Um, and brother uh, Devin, I think um, I I was just advising um, sister. Um, how do you say your name, Zui? <laughs> Uh, Zewe. Zewe, right. Okay, can, Zewe. I read, can I read the question out loud if you don't mind? Uh, sure, sure. Just, just so that it's for the benefit of those who are not able to, who are not reading the question, right? Uh, so the okay. question is um, <clears throat> uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, brothers and sisters. So Nick, do you ever feel like uh, you aren't developing, strengthening your faith at the right pace? Uh, that is, you're learning too slowly in comparison to other Muslims, reverts or not? And if you do, how do you reconcile these feelings and reassure yourself that your intentions and rate of progress are still okay? Um, yeah, I, I was I was just touching on this with with his sister, but I can uh, I can repeat, no problem. Um, everybody, you shouldn't ever compare yourself to anybody else. Um, you learn at your own pace. You know, learn at a pace that's comfortable with you. Yes, it's good to, you know, look at people that are above you and say, oh, you know, I would like to, uh, you know, uh, attain the knowledge that I believe this person has at one day. Um, but that knowledge is of no benefit unless there's sincerity behind seeking it. We would never want our goal to be to attain the knowledge of somebody else and that's the goal it's got to be sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you just go at your own pace that's really that's really the easiest way to put it don't put any pressure on yourself whatever you're comfortable with reading you shouldn't beat yourself up by looking at somebody else that you know is ahead of you they can recite more Quran than you um, uh, or, or whatever. It, it, it's good in one sense to help motivate you, but it shouldn't be a thing where it starts making you feel bad, you know, because there's also people, um, I, I'm not really sure how long you've been Muslim for, but there's also people that are probably fresher Muslims than you are. And, and they don't know some of the stuff that you know. So you're, you're actually above them in knowledge. You know, so uh, not everybody's at, at different levels. So, um, and the fact that you're concerned about it is a good sign. It's a good sign that you have Iman, you have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you're concerned about perfecting your Islam. And that's a really beautiful thing that you have there. So slowly build on it. Um, ask Allah for help. Ask Allah to make it easy for you. Ask Allah to make you sincere in what you're learning that is that's that the purpose behind it is to get closer to him because even because the best of deeds are the ones that you do continuously even though they're small in number you know even if you're like you see some brother or sister that's praying like 20 units of voluntary prayers a night or something like that and you're like wow like i can't keep up with this like how does this person do this you just go you know what I'm just going to give a lot to two extra uh, two extra units of prayer uh, a night. Uh, that's that's my that's what I, I I'm going to do for now. And then you can build on that because as your iman, as your faith grows stronger and stronger, you can carry more and more, and you'll and you'll you'll feel it easier to do more and more deeds and and read more books and, and those type of things. Um, so. So just just take just take it easy and, and go slowly and um, and just focus on yourself. Whatever you're doing right now, as long as you're doing something at slowly step by step, that's good enough. That's good enough, and you will slowly build on that. Inshallah. 
Oh, that's awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, there was somebody who had their hand up. Uh, was it Brother Awad? Yes. Uh, Salam alaikum, Brother. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Wa rahmatullah. And uh, Brother, uh, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you set a good examples for for us as Muslims and for the by sharing your story. And that is really a touching story. And this is how from the day of the starting of the, of the time, uh, the companion, like uh, Sahabi uh, Bilal, Sahib al-Rumi, Salman al-Farisi, all these great companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu how they gathered, how they when they started to do these things now with this pandemic, it reminds me the Dar al Arqam. Now our hearts are so connected. Even when we have seen Muslims' country are turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by stop practicing Islam. And we will see here we are in Canada. We see the fairness and, and the and the justice, and we see the opportunities for the freedom of religion. And, and this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, give us the freedom to choose and how to worship uh, uh, and, and show us by setting a good example of sending the, the sealed prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a perfection of manners. When I see you, brother, I feel very proud the way you talk. I, 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 I hope. I, I was born a Muslim, and I am a Muslim all the way, but I have a lot of shortcomings. I have a lot of challenges. You live in peace because you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are satisfied, and Allah give you these chances to, be com to have companion, righteous people, and that's the best way. So they come together. These hearts gather in the sake of Allah and separated on the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani rajulan tahabba fi Allah ajtama'a alayhi wa tafarra min as-sab'a al-lazeen zullam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al-qiyama fi zillihi yawm la zilla illa zill. You are, the, you are, we are, I hope and I pray to Allah to be among those people. That is a wonderful the message is delivered. It is proven Islam is, is the best. Islam is the solution. And we have to be like one body. We have to feel. And now we are happy. We feel happiness. Because we have the great hope and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tide our heart and to make us, to help us pass this pandemic and pass this challenge. And the best thing is to stick with good companion and the Quran. <clears throat> yes, this Quran will come to your heart, no matter what, even if you don't understand Arabic. I know it is easy for you and you can weep and cry, but, but the meaning will get there. It is, it is like, like the fitra you have said. This is the Quran of Allah. Uh, he speaks all the language. If you have the good intention and if you have open heart, open mind, you will get it. This Quran, he will cure all the sickness of the shirk, all the sickness of envy, all the sickness of greediness. Those oppressors, you, you, we will see them now, how they are losing. We pray Allah, keep us together and, and show us the truth. And we are brother. Really, believe me, truly, you are my brother. We love you in the sake of Allah. Wallahi. Better than my, my like, uh, biological brother. You are my real brother. Allah, 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 Allah,
Yes. Allah Azza wa Jal says the brothers and brothers and the sisters are, uh, are, are, are the believers are brothers and sisters. And ikhwa in Arabic actually means blood brothers. Mm. So our, our, our relationship, our bond of, of our, the faith that we share as Muslim brothers and sisters is so strong that our creator calls it a like a blood blo- blood bond like blood blood brothers and sisters ikhwa so that's the that's the that's how we should care for one another in al islam and jazakallah khair uh, brother for your very kind words i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me better than you think i am and to forgive me for things that you don't know <laughs> this is this is what you should say when somebody uh, uh, says some good things about you it's uh, it's a beautiful dua that you know, uh, we're always striving to be better, and um, we we if anybody ever praises you or says something good about you, you always say you know, uh, may Allah make me better than than what you think of me. So um, it, it's a good uh, dua, a good uh, supplication to say. Jazakumullah khair. You're uh, I, I take you as my dear brother as well. All of you, all uh, my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Awad. Thank you, Sheikh Ahsan. Last question, inshallah, we'll ask and then we'll we'll uh, call it a night, inshallah. Is, uh, can you recommend, this is from uh, Sister Isabel, can you recommend podcasts slash YouTube videos or scholars uh, for, uh, I, I'm assuming here for just education purposes and whatnot? Um, Sheikh Ahsan. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's there's many, uh, mashallah, beautiful speakers out there. Um, um, you know, people that, you know, jump, jump out, uh, 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 in my mind right now that, that are, you know, famous. Um, I mean, you know, there's like Mufti Menk, you know, he's, he's, uh, I've had the pleasure of attending his, uh, nephew's, um, uh, nephew's wedding in Medina. Um, he's a very, uh, beautiful brother, mashallah, tabarakallah, him and his family. Um, um, I could, I could, maybe uh, could provide some links to some videos uh, of, of different uh, scholars uh, and different uh, people you could learn from, um, you know, to learn, especially to learn the basics, because especially when you're, you're becoming Muslim uh, or you're, you're just fresh to uh, Al-Islam and a new Muslim, you want to, you want to stick to uh, the basics and, and um, have ease in the way and, and the format that you're learning uh, the religion in. You don't want to be bombarded with uh, too many different topics and, and stuff like that because uh, Al-Islam is a religion of knowledge. Uh, the, the, the first ayah that was revealed, the first verse that was revealed to uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was Iqra. Iqra, okay, was, is to read, read. That was, that was the first, uh, first uh, verse that was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So our religion is based on knowledge and um, authentic knowledge. So um, every everything we do in Al Islam has um, uh, a, be- a basis for it. Has proof behind why we're doing it. We're not doing things based on no knowledge. Like, you know, um, other uh, religions may be doing that, but in Islam, we don't. Everything is uh, revealed by Allah Azza wa Jal. Every movement, every action we do in Islam is uh, from the guidance of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now. Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you very much, uh, Shaykh Hassan. It was really, really awesome to, uh, to hear it from you and uh, to... Um, to, to learn from you and thank you everybody for joining us uh, for this uh, the, this, uh, this session, this gathering. We pray to Allah that uh, he gives us all uh, istiqama, which is strength and, uh, and uh, he gives us all the tawfiq, the divine guidance to continue on this path uh, as brothers and sisters in faith, inshallah. And it's really, really awesome to keep in touch this way, alhamdulillah. Uh, Inshallah, we will conclude with that, and uh, I will see you all next month. Next month, Inshallah, we have uh, on February the 9th, Inshallah. February the 9th, the second uh, Tuesday of each month is what we're uh, aiming for, Inshallah. And uh, Sheikh Hassan, uh, your message is actually coming to me. 
uh, if you want to like uh, oh, sorry that's okay if you just you were you were sending all these like beautiful replies i was responding to everybody i wanted didn't think i wasn't responding to the salams and they're saying thank you sorry <laughs> no, 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 to everybody that said salam and you're most welcome to everybody that said thank you that's <laughs> Jazakallah khair. Also, Sheikh Hassan will be uh, joining us uh, in next month. Yeah, next month, inshallah, for the youth conference. Uh, even if you're not a youth, inshallah, come by. You are young at heart, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it will be really nice uh, to see you all then. Uh, just last thing is Sister Alice. You know, you know her from, uh, she's the, the sister who is the lead for the uh, New Muslim Care Program. She's actually very ill. So please re remember her in your prayers. May Allah give her shifa. That's why she's not here today with us. She's usually here every time. So we pray to Allah Almighty that he cures her fully, leaving behind no trace of any sickness or, or any ailment and gives her full recovery. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Thank you very much, everybody. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiru wa natubu alaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.